Steve's Dang It's, where he yells and screams about things. My name is Steve Dangle and this is another edition, it's a weekly thing that we do, Steve's Dang It's. Every week I look at a bunch of things around the NHL that made me or the players or the coaches or whoever, the fans, people, say dang it. And dang it, we got some good ones, or bad ones, which is why they're here. So why not start with this one? Ben Bishop. I know they just got eliminated, I feel bad. To the defensive play of the Dallas Stars. And I think that penalty kill, the two penalty, look out. Well, Bishop gives it away. He scores! Jaden Schwartz takes advantage of the giveaway by Bishop. Self-inflicted wound. Kendall was talking about the third defenseman concept of Ben Bishop. Well, he's trying to be a third defenseman right here, but he mishandles the puck because of the pressure from Robert Thomas and Jaden Schwartz. Johnny on the spot will take it and stash it behind Ben Bishop, making it a one-goal game. Oh, that's dang it. Now listen, make no mistake, Ben Bishop was absolutely fantastic in the series, absolutely fantastic in either round, absolutely fantastic in these playoffs. Deserved his Vesna nomination, he kept the stars in it despite their owners saying they were plucking horse spit or something like that. Shout out Rob Pizzo. But this, that's dang it. Jaden Schwartz, Johnny on the spot, will take it and stash it behind Ben Bishop, making it a one goal game. It's not your typical goalie dang it. Goalies mishandling the puck have been a uh, a theme, a favorite, a, a, an easy go-to, if you will, for Steve's dang it. But they're usually like the goalie making a oop, oop, like not knowing what to do behind the net or something. This is just Bishop whiffing. And you can whiff and give the puck away and maybe the guy gets a shot off, but he doesn't score. That guy ain't Jaden Schwartz. He is having himself a time these playoffs and Bishop pays for it here. Now, Ben Bishop is actually involved in our next dang it, but our next dang it is really three plays in one. It is a dang it package. Dang it, that's a package. No, can you delete that? Can you delete that? Did he delete it? We'll start with Ben Bishop on this one, but it's not what you think. Now, Pareko with a shot. That knocks down Bishop. He lost the stick, he's down, and the Blues score! Alexander Steen with Bishop down, 3-1 St. Louis. You give him time, space, and Bishop reacts too late, and you see where it gets him, right up on the collarbone. The left collarbone gets dinged up, they keep the play alive, Steen throws it to the goal, Ben Bishop is still down. Ah, oh, typical Ben Bishop, What? what we called it out in either the last video or a previous Dang It video, this guy flops. Here he is flopping again, how dare you, and it led to a goal against. It's like Essa Lindell all over again, except no. Colton Pareko drills Ben Bishop, and it hits him up high. Blues recover their own rebound, Alex Dean fires it on, it's going wide, but Jaden Schwartz, there he is again, tips it in. It's actually a nice goal. It's actually a nice goal. Except for the fact that Ben Bishop was genuinely hurt on the play. Got x-rays and everything. It gets missed or ignored or how do you miss that? He's one of the biggest players in the league and the goalie. Now, the Dallas Stars did not have possession of the puck. That's why the play wasn't blown dead. I mean, a player's got to be really hurt in order for them to blow the play dead and the team doesn't have possession of the puck. Except he was. So that is a dang it, but it is slightly more excusable than most. Listen, I can't go off on officiating every time they miss something. I know it seems like it. So is this really a dang it on its own? It's it's definitely close. Bishop was hurt. Play probably should have been blown dead. Blues don't score that goal. That is a dang it. But it is more of a dang it when packaged with the following. Here's Artemi Panarin with, I don't know, it's just a a face-off. And one across and moving in. It's Lorensky to brush it along. Back is to play it there. Slipped along by him, taken by Panarin, handed across to Jones, and a wrister is deflected by one of the Bruins and then shuffled along by Rask. Meanwhile, out in front, trying to back in it. The score by Panarin! Ah, I tricked you. That was not a face-off. It was Artemi Panarin scoring a goal, which he should not have. Why? Why am I am I criticizing Tuukka Rask? Because he should have had that one. Actually, Tuukka Rask has been incredible, and he would have had this one. Well, rather, he wouldn't have had to have this one because the play should have been blown dead because the puck hit the netting. But ah, what are you gonna do? You're gonna go off on officials every time 
that a play gets missed, sometimes that gets missed. Case sera. It was not called it's to the Blue Jackets' advantage. They get the puck back and then they score. You see the Bruins on the ice? They don't really know. They didn't know until they saw the replay. Wait a tick. Replay! That thing that we have for goalie interference and offsides because we are hell-bent on getting the call right. Because why wouldn't we? The NHL, getting the call right because of replay some of the time. Oh, you gotta, you look at the thing. Oh, it's slowing the game down. It, it, no, 30 seconds. You look at the thing. Did it hit the mesh? Yep, here it is. Here, let me show you. Do you see it hitting the thing? Do you see, all right, cool. We're all refs now, and that doesn't count. Play should have been blown dead. Except no, they missed it. So in, in that case, because they missed it, they got the call right. What? And there are a lot of times where I go on these little rants and I'll see in the comments, well, that's the rule. Ah, yes, but you are leaving out the fact that it's a pretty stupid rule. Replay everything or just don't have it. Seriously, that's a dang it. Hey, here's another one. Let's stay in this series. Here's Charlie McAvoy hitting Josh Anderson in the head. Anderson got position, then he got nailed. And there's going to be a penalty to Charlie McAvoy for the hit on Anderson, who's still down. And the question is, I think Kelly Sutherland's saying he's gone. I think he's calling a major on this one. And Anderson is still down. The officials are huddling Steve Kazari and Kelly Sutherland. The initial reaction to me was that Sutherland was going to kick him out. That might not be the case. This could be a pivotal swing in this game with 20 seconds to go in the period. Now, Charlie McAvoy, bad boy, you can't do that. He got suspended for a game, but to his credit, unlike Brad Marchand, he was facing the player he hit. The lie, spot it. But now here's the thing, touch the top of the head, that's the magic word, you're out of the game. So there it is, Charlie McAvoy is kicked out of the game for the hit to the head and, sorry? Oh, they, they called it, they called it back. They, they called it back. Instead, it is a two minute head checking, really? And then I'm seeing again, well, that's the rule. It's a two minute or a match penalty. Give him the match. Why is that the rule? Who came up with that? Someone asked me recently, what do you think the owners are gonna talk about at the owners meetings? Nothing. Had another guy go relax. McAvoy's gonna get suspended. Why might a Blue Jackets fan not care? Oh, it's great news for Hurricanes fans because he's gonna miss game one of their third round series. The third round, that thing that the Blue Jackets will not be a part of. Another theory thrown out there is now, because of the missed call, the noted dang it from the Vegas Shark series where Cody Eakin got a five minute major and very should not have, and the Sharks came back in that game and won, they're gun shy. They don't wanna call the five minute major because what if we got it wrong? So them getting it wrong once led to them getting it wrong again and again. Screen! Look at the thing! Play stopped anyway. It's a big decision. Take a minute. Officiating is a hard job. Why don't you do it? Well, hey, actually, I have a suggestion. Why don't you do it? Why don't they do this league? Uh, <sighs> I'm running out of ways to describe it, man. Oh, you know how I love the Bruins. But like that has nothing to do with the Bruins. In fact, the Bruins were the ones who got screwed on the Panarin thing. Okay, how many of you have ever been to a hockey game with someone for the first time? They've never seen a hockey game before. If you took them to any one of these games, how do you explain what happened? Man, I know every playoffs we're having the same conversation. This call was terrible, this call was terrible, but is it just me or are there a lot more this year? Little wrinkles in the rules, little, oh, we should fix that in the off season. Both the rule book and the lack of enforcement of it are the dang it here. Pick what hockey is, for the love of God. Last but not least, <laughs> Last but not least, finally moving on from screaming about officials. That, that's happening as often as goalies coughing up the puck now in dang it. Here's Brock Nelson tapping Curtis McElhaney on the head after a goal. Right off the stick. Vogel can't get it out. Here's Daly. Scores! Josh Bailey, what a shot under the crossbar and in. And the Islanders tie it at two. Shoot the puck. It's amazing what might happen. Josh Bailey didn't want to take a one-timer in the first period. Ha! That's pretty funny. It's like professional wrestling. Yeah, your finishing move can be awesome, but just remember the other wrestler can use it against you. Well, unfortunately, the Islanders lost that game. And they got swept in the series. And at the end of the series, what happens? Handshakes. And sometimes, head taps. Oh, Dougie Hamilton. I don't even know. Was that? Yeah, it was on purpose, come on. Because look, here's the original one. Everyone talks about how it was McElhaney getting his head tapped, but there's Dougie Hamilton front and center. Methinks Dougie Hamilton watched the game footage, saw his nameplate in that little clip, 
And he might have remembered the thing. And now it's a moment you could hang in a museum. Get it? Because one time they said Dougie Hamilton liked to visit the museum. I, I'm just going to beat that dead horse. I don't care. That's it for Steve's dang it's in this one. But we'll go back to the Islanders and Hurricanes for hat picks, which you can see in another video. It's like this, but happy. But this is where you come to watch me complain, and then you complain. This is the bad, very bad place. Hat picks is the good place. We'll come back to the series and we'll, we'll, we'll be happy. Uplifting, inspiring. Right, Drew? Right? Don't shake your head. It's, they can't hear you shake your head. So that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Leave a comment down below and tell all your friends that hockey is, it's almost done. Almost. It's gonna be great.